point to point and the new feature in router 7 point to point on number let's discover how those two network types will fit in our ospf topology welcome to the network trip the next network type to analyze is point to point so what happens if we have a link where we are just expecting one neighbor like for example in this case r2 is connected to r5 we are expecting just one neighbor so this can be a point-to-point -point network type and this is going to bring a lot of benefits to our topology this is going to increase the performance and how is that going to help so basically we don't have to waste time for the dr election so by default when we are using the broadcast network type there is a timer so after enabling the ospf process those devices are going to wait a period of time that is equal to the whole time 40 seconds waiting for the dr election and after 40 seconds they will start exchanging those lsas if we are using point to point network type so basically we don't need to waste time in a dr and a bdr because there is just one way for sending those updates and also that means that we are not going to have the LSA type 2 because those are generated by the DR only and in this case there is no DR. That means that the database is going to be smaller. As a result, we can help the CPU. We'll reduce the CPU load. To configure the point to point, I'm going to use R2 and R5. So they are connected by using the network 10.2.5.0/thorium. Dot one is configured in R2, and dot two is configured in R5. So we'll go to R2 and we'll set the point-to-point -point network type to Ether2. So this is R2 now, and basically I only need an entry. This is on Ether2 network type. This is going to be point-to-point. -point. In this case, we don't need the priority value because there is no DR election. So they are meaningless in this case so point to point and then we are going to click ok and then we can go to r5 so we can see that r5 is connected out of the interface ether1 to r2 but additionally there is a network that we need to advertise and that is the network 192.168.5.0 and that is connected to the interface ether2 so in this case, we need an interface template for Ether2 and also for the loopback interface that will be passive. And then Ether1 is going to be point to point. I have all the configuration for the IP addresses in Ether5. And additionally, I have the OFPF instance, the area, and there is a template that is including the loopback interface and Ether2 using the passive property because we don't expect neighbors out of those interfaces. I just need to add an interface template for the interface Ether1 that is connected to R2, but in this case, the network type is gonna be point to point. Now we can click OK. In some seconds, we can see that we have full adjacency and also we have the routing information coming from the routers R1 to R4. So you can see all those OFPF routes that are now in the routing table. And also we can see the link state database here. So this is how a point to point link is going to work. There is no DR, there is no BDR. We'll expect a full adjacency between those two devices. Point to point networks will bring a lot of speed, the convergence we'll see the effect if we have a pretty large network. So it's recommended to use this type of network type if we're expecting just one neighbor out of one interface. There is a variant for the point-to-point -point networks and it has been introduced in router OS 7 and that is called the point-to-point -point on number. So let's see what exactly that on number means and how are we gonna apply that network type in our topology. If we go back to 1990s or 1980s, probably, in that moment we were using what is called classful networks. That means that we were forced to use a slash 8, a slash 16, or a slash 24. But just in mind, having a 
pair of routers connected via serial connection. So we had to assign a slice 24 network those interfaces. So in that case, that is not efficient. So Cisco came up with uh, the solution by using on number IP addresses. So that basically means that if we have an interface and that interface has the IP, for example, 10.0.0.1 slash 24, we can borrow that IP and use that IP in that interface. So we're going to use IP on number. Basically, it's taking the same IP from that interface. So if we are, for example, peering with a Cisco router and that Cisco router using on number IPs, then we need to use the type point to point on number. Let's check the topology that I have now and let's see how we're going to apply that. If I check the topology now, I have a Cisco router connected to a MyRotic router. The loopback IP address in that device is 10.255.255.6. If I go to the Cisco router, we can see how the IP on number is used in the interface that is connected to the MyRotic device. If I check the IP address, show IP interface brief, we can see that there is a sub interface on G00 that has the IP 10.255.255.6, but that IP is borrowed from the interface loopback 0. If I check the running config for the interface loopback 0, we can see that the IP is assigned to that interface. This is a slash 32 IP address. If I check the configuration for the interface G00.1, we can see that that one is simply a sub interface for VLAN 1 that is the native VLAN. But instead of assigning an IP address, this device has an on number IP. That means that it's just borrowing the IP address from that interface, loopback zero. Then we are setting the OFPF type to point to point. So that means that this interface or sub interface is a point to point on number. And then we are attaching that interface to the local OFPF process. The IP that is configured now on Ether2 is the IP 10.4.4.4 slash 32. So to be able to ping to that IP, we need to add a static route on the Cisco device. If I check the routing table for this device, show IP route, we can see that there is a static route pointing to the IP 10.4.4.4 that is going out the interface G00.1. If I go to R4 in my MyRotic device, IP, addresses, then I can see that the Ether2 has the IP 10.4.4.4. So that basically the configuration that we have in that Cisco device, you can get the configuration in that device from the description in this video. Now let's go to our MyRotic device. Remember this approach is required only if you are establishing an adjacency with a Cisco device using an on number IP address. If that is not the case, then you will use the point-to-point -point method that I explained before. So let's go now to R4 and let's analyze what we have in this device. If I go to R4 and I try to ping the IP on the Cisco device, we can see that that pin is not working. And basically that is because we don't have a route pointing to that IP address. So now I will add an static route pointing to the IP 10.255.255.6. That the IP on the loopback interface on the Cisco device, the IP that is being borrowed and now is used on the interface facing R2. So we're going to use as a gateway the interface Ether2. I'm using Ether2 because the Ether2 interface in the MyRotic is using a point-to-point -point IP. That means that it's using a slash 32 IP address. We can simply use the interface name as the gateway. And now I will click apply. We'll come back later to make some changes to the scope and target scope. 
but at this point I must be able to ping that Cisco device. So you can see that we can reach the IP 10.255.255.6. After adding the static route, then we can go to routing, OSPF, interface template, and here we need to add an entry, including the interface Ether2, and the network type is gonna be point to point on number. And now we can click OK. If I go to neighbors, we can see that now we have an adjacency that has been established. If I go to the Cisco device, we can see that notification informing about the new adjacency that has been established. If I check the routing table on the Cisco device, we're going to see several OFPF routes that are coming from R4. If I don't use the own number network type, that is not going to work. For example, if I set this to PTP and I go back to neighbors, we don't see that adjacency coming up. If I check the Cisco device, debug IP or FPF hello, we can see that there are some hello messages coming from the router, but the adjacency is not being established. So now I will simply stop this show IP or FPF neighbor. If we check the neighbors on the Cisco device by using the show IP or FPF neighbor command, we can see that the neighbor has been identified because we got an, a hello message from R4, but it's in the init state. It's attempting to establish the neighbor relationship but that is not happening. And that is because the network type on the MyRotic device is different. If we see the log on the MyRotic device, we don't see any messages at this point. If I change the template to point to point on number, this adjacency will come up. So in some seconds, we'll see the notification message on the terminal. You can see that this is now App. But if I go to IP routes, then we can see that the network that is being redistributed by the Cisco router is unreachable. And that is happening because this is using a target of COP of 10 and a scope of 20. So we need to set a target scope with a lower value in the static route that we used before. In that way, we can use this kind of recursive routing. If I go to this entry and I set the scope to 10 and the target scope to 9, you'll see here what is going to happen with the other entry. So I have 10 and 9. So after clicking apply, you'll see that this entry now can be used. If I set the scope to 30, that is not going to work. If I set the scope to 20, still that is not going to work. So the value in the target scope in the static route must be less than the target scope in the route that is created by OFPF. And now we can see the network that is being advertised by the Cisco device. If I go to this MyRoti device and I try to ping the network on the Cisco router, that is going to work. So let's see. You can see that we can reach that device. If I go to the Cisco device again, and I try to ping, for example, the IP in R1 10.0.0.1, that is gonna work. So everything is working as expected. That is how we are gonna use the PTP on number approach. Now you are ready to go and configure point-to-point -point and point-to-point -point on number network types in your topology. I hope this video has been helpful for you and I see you in the next one. Thank you.